All right, I'm uh, calling that to quit because uh, that charger was not shutting off. All right, let's unbox this. Got some documentation here. Got two different lengths of terminal bolts. Just an observation, a lot of the other batteries I've gotten uh, tend to have a little more of the high density foam. This is just your average styrofoam that it was packaged in. The batteries still seem to arrive okay, but uh, maybe not as well packaged as other brands I've done. And here's the battery right here. Nice uh, carrying handles here on the top. And uh, we've got the little uh, terminal covers. Your standard 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Uh, they're advertising that it has prismatic cells. And based on the weight of this, uh, it definitely feels like that. It is a group 24 size. There are the dimensions uh, right there. And uh, standard voltage uh, parameters uh, for charging. Do up to four in parallel, four in series. That's pretty much it for this battery. It's pretty bare bones. This is my full size kitchen refrigerator. And uh, if you follow this uh, cord right here, it uh, comes over to the testing section. And we've got this greener power 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery we're going to see how long that can run my full-size fridge for we're also going to be doing a capacity test we've got the victron smart shunt here now this is less than a 0.2 c rate of discharge so that usually skews the numbers a little bit to the lower side i usually try to have it to land somewhere 95 amp hours or above so we'll see what uh, this battery is able to do now i do have this power station here for two reasons reason number one i need an inverter to convert the dc power to ac for the fridge reason number two sometimes i'm at work or whatever when uh, the battery dies and uh, that power station will see my fridge through after the battery dies if I'm not right here and to catch it so that way my fridge doesn't uh, warm up and I lose stuff inside. All right this is the shunt app and you can see everything zeroed out and notice up there in the top left corner 4 p.m on the dot so let's see how long this runs for. All right the runtime test on my full-size fridge with this greener power battery is complete and I caught it right as it finished. Take a note it's almost 11 a.m so it ran my full-size fridge for approximately 19 hours. That's very impressive. And even more impressive is the capacity. This was less than a 0.2c rate. And check it out, 103 amp hours. Wow, great job, Greener Power. Can this Greener Power 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run a full size household vacuum cleaner? Let's find out. Yeah, no sweat. Can this uh, Greener Power 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run? An electric hot plate. This particular uh, hot plate uh, pulls about 1700 watts, which translated to 12 volts is about 130 amps getting drawn out of this battery. So it should be over its 100 amp maximum. So let's see if it uh, trips or not. It does not look like it is going to trip. Been uh, running for uh, a number of seconds here and still going strong. So if this battery has overcurrent protection, uh, it is uh, quite loose and uh, allows it to uh, draw over 100 amps uh, for quite some time. All right, can this greener power 12 volt battery run a high-end desktop gaming PC workstation? I've got three 4K monitors here and a 4K gaming benchmark running on that uh, screen right there. If you come down here, you can see there's no power plugged in and uh, you can see the cord coming and uh, plugged into this lithium iron phosphate UPS unit from Golden Meat. It's awesome. Anyway, you can see here that uh, the computer is pulling just under 600 watts of power. Pushing this uh, PC to its max, that uh, 12 volt battery would be able to run this for approximately two hours if the battery were fully charged. Now, if uh, I wasn't pushing it as hard as uh, I am uh, with this uh, benchmark, uh, you could uh, easily get four to six hours if you're just doing basic, you know, word processing, email, web browsing, etc. Can this greener 12 volt battery in conjunction with this 3000 watt inverter power follow this cord right here? A batch of wash. Now this is a gas powered dryer and so as a result it just uses the 120 volt uh, plugs. So that's important uh, because electric dryers would not work with this. The dryer is usually the hardest one to get going uh, just because to get a load of wet clothes like this starting to tumble it needs a huge amount of surge power to get that going. But let's give it a shot here. All right starting three two one struggle, but it did it. Everyone's washer and dryer will be different, but uh, from mine, I typically see at least two full batches of wash off of one of these batteries. That's wash and dry. And uh, again, depending on how long those cycles are, I can sometimes even get three out of one of these batteries. Let's do a batch of wash now in conjunction with the dryer, and we'll come back when this is on spin cycle and uh, see how much power both of these combined uh, are using. All right, we got the washer uh, in spin mode up to full speed and the dryer running. And uh, as you can see, both are running just great off battery power. This inverter is incredibly heavy, so for the next test, we're going to use extension cords. The question though is, can this greener power 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power follow this cord? A 120 volt mini split heat pump. Well, let's find out. And there we have it. 
it's quite uh, chilly today, so we're running this in heating mode. So how long could a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery like this run a mini split heat pump? Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on how cold it is outside, it depends on what temperature you have set inside. Uh, but uh, this uh, unit will vary its speed all the way up to like a thousand watts when it first turns on, uh, all the way down to uh, just over 200 watts when it's just kind of coasting. But uh, on previous tests and uh, other things I've uh, tried, uh, I've been able to get about four hours uh, of runtime off a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery on this. Another one of everyone's favorite tests. Can this greener power 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power follow this yellow cord? A whole home gas furnace. Well, let's find out. The secret sauce to making this work with an external power source like this battery is this little guy right here. This is the easy generator switch. And uh, you can see that uh, the extension cord just comes and plugs into a receptacle right there. And uh, then you've got this simple toggle switch to uh, go between grid power, calling it generator power. In our case, it's, it's inverter power. Anyway, I absolutely adore this thing. If you live in a cold climate and uh, you have power outages and you want to be able to run your gas furnace uh, while the grid is down, this will save your life. And it doesn't only apply to furnaces. This will power any 120 volt load that uh, you may want to power. And I'll leave a link for the video down in the description about when I installed this so you can check it out further. All right, we've got the fan fully up to speed. And as you can see, this 12 volt battery is running this furnace no problem whatsoever. I always get the question, how long will the a battery like this run my furnace? Well, it depends on a bunch of things. My particular furnace pulls about 500 watts when it's up and running like it is right now. That means on a fully charged 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, you're gonna get around two and a half-ish hours of runtime. Now, something to remember is that furnaces don't run two hours straight unless your house is really, really cold. They turn on for a few minutes and then and heat the house up and then they turn off. And they turn on for a few minutes and turn off. You can actually get substantially longer run times due to that action happening, just like the fridge. But yes, you can power a furnace with an inverter from a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, no problem. Okay, can this greener power, 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power? Call the yellow cord, full size microwave. Let's find out, three, two, one. it did run the microwave. So that's good and bad. Good from the standpoint that it was able to run the microwave. Bad from the standpoint that a microwave like that pulls 1800 watts of power. That's well over 100 amps from this battery. And so the fact that it didn't shut down uh, means that uh, if this has overcurrent protection, it does not kick in uh, very quickly or easily. And uh, I'd like to see a little tighter tolerance on that if possible. So not a huge deal um, if you end up getting one of these, uh, just to be sure and incorporate an external fuse uh, to help cover the base on overcurrent protection. All right, this uh, greener battery has uh, been in the freezer and uh, you might be able to see uh, the frost and what have you on it. So nice and chilly. We've got uh, a charger right here. We'll test uh, low temperature charging protection on this battery and see if it has any. You can see the uh, green light is flashing. What will happen is it will turn red for a few seconds. And if this does have low temperature charging protection, this will then immediately turn green after being red for just a few seconds. If it continues to stay red and uh, try to charge, then that means that the low temperature charging protection does not work. So let's see what happens. All right, I'm uh, calling that uh, quit because uh, that charger was not shutting off. This does not appear to have any kind of low temperature charging protection. And it should have been plenty cold uh, because it was uh, in my deep freezer for approximately 12 hours. So that should be plenty of time to get it below the freezing point at least. So how does this greener power battery compare to the competition? Well, uh, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to this spreadsheet you're looking at where I've uh, listed and compared every single battery I've tested in one location. So you guys can easily look and uh, crunch numbers and, and see how they all stack up. Similar to some other batteries that I've tested, this one just didn't know when to give up. Uh, I exceeded uh, what it was rated for numerous times in my testing and it never uh, triggered an overcurrent uh, protection instance. So I would highly recommend uh, if you use this battery to be sure and use an external fuse with it uh, just uh, for that added uh, overcurrent protection. I'll also keep this out of the cold. Low temperature charging protection uh, seems to not be a thing uh, with this battery or if it is, the battery needs to be very cold uh, before it triggers anything. And I personally like to see tighter tolerances on cold temperature charging. Aside from that, uh, it's, it's a great little battery. It uh, did very well in all the testing today. Those are my thoughts. Now I want to hear from you. Please leave comments down below. I try to read and respond to all of them. And then also please consider doing two things for me. And that would be uh, giving this video a like and subscribing. Those are two 100% free things for you to do, uh, but they really benefit uh, the channel tremendously. And you'll especially want to be subscribed because uh, coming up here, I'll give you a little sneak peek. I've got a big project uh, happening over there on the battery front. And uh, in addition to that, uh, I'm going to be connecting all of these smaller batteries that I've got 
into that system. We're going to be a little uh, risky and uh, make some different brands and uh, what have you and see uh, what uh, the results are. So you'll want to be sure and stay tuned for that. All right, we'll catch you all next time.